Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody. This is episode 92. You've made it to RV Talk Radio. My name is Rob Scribner. I'm your host. And thank you so much for watching and listening to our shows. Uh, If you don't know, we also make a video version of this that you can listen to if that's easier for you. But we are in all the normal podcast directories like uh, uh, TuneIn and uh, all the rest of them. Anyway, so if you like to listen to podcasts through your cell phone, feel free to find us. Just type in RV Talk Radio. You'll find us. We've been around a long time. And I got to say that the last show I did got lots of great feedback. I love the feedback. You got to remember we are a talk show. And so sometimes we bring up subjects that not even not necessarily uh, what we believe in in the show, but like to hear people's opinions and also uh, bring things up to a debate. So anyway, I want to talk about some of the feedback. So let's uh, let's get started. So as some of you guys know, uh, on the last show, I talked about, uh, well, uh, healthy eating and what Sherry and I uh, actually started and uh, and still doing. And uh, believe it or not, we have not eaten any types of meat, dairy or eggs for over six weeks now. So that's been, to me, totally amazing. And it has been making me feel better and I am losing weight. <laughs> so watch out. I'm going to get skinny. So anyway, um, we're not going to, I hope the last show didn't feel like preaching. I was just hoping that we were informing people of, hey, a couple of old farts like me and Sherry are trying out something new and trying to live a little longer so we can be with our grandkids and and not die a nasty death, you know. (laughs) So anyway, that's what that was all about. And it helps one person to think about a new way of living. Hey, then we accomplished our goal. Uh, One of the... uh, uh, one of the bad things I did is I uh, about food is well not bad but I put out a special video about making a uh, chocolate cake from scratch, and it doesn't require any eggs. Um, it was uh, uh, an old recipe that my mother used to make, and it's a wonderful chocolate cake. Uh, and uh, if you go back in some of our videos on uh, Outdoor Travel Channel, um, you'll also and I also put it on our vegan channel, and uh, it goes step by step of how to make the cake. And one of our listeners uh, made a comment on our last show that they tried the cake and they said it was great. And they said, "What well, next time they got to make sure you do because." <laughs> um, it's a big batch when you make it. So she, um, he or she, I, I don't know. I have to, let me check and see what the name of the person was. Yeah, uh, the name of their uh, channel is BMC, and I, I don't know the name of that person. But I've had feedback from them before, and I do appreciate the feedback. Uh, I love constructive feedback. And even if it's opposing to what we say in the show, I am a true believer, just like Democrats and Republicans and stuff, that Somewhere you got to meet in the middle, and you should be able to have healthy debates without saying something nasty. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, the comment I got was uh, from the BMC uh, comment was basically that they both agreed with me that yeah, I'm a little old school. She, uh, he or she's a little old school, and uh, we have kind of some old time beliefs, and and things are different. And uh, whether that's good or bad, that's not really. Uh, I, you know, that's the debate right there. And do I have to change or change my beliefs? Uh, are some of the old beliefs that we've had better than the new beliefs? Oh, <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, some great feedback from uh, BMC. And I also got a uh, comment from, I think, uh, uh, Phil Sears, it says here on here. And he was commenting of pretty much telling me what a terrible person I was. Uh <laughs> that I I am opposed and and I have issues with some of the nomadic kind of lifestyles and the e-begging and people giving people money and stuff like that. And, uh, uh, and, and when people do that, that's their decision and not ours to judge. If you like giving money to a nomadic show or something and, uh, and you're happy with it and you're satisfied with that, that's, 
it's all good. And I agree with that totally. And uh, uh, my my concern is the structure of it is, you know, all of us in a sense are teachers. All of us are a model for other young people to look at as, as a lifestyle. And it's like, if we all had that kind of lifestyle, what, you know, when's the next engineer going to happen? Or when's the next aerospace mechanic? Or when's the next great welder going to come along? When's the next great mecha uh, diesel mechanic or the next doctor and stuff? If we all decided we just want to live for freedom and live for our lives and, and, and just worry about me and now and all that stuff, where would we be? And, uh, you know, of course, not everybody's the same. I understand that. So, uh, I guess I talk a little bit more in a parenting style because I'm older and I have kids that are in their thirties now. And I totally all the time wanted to make them sure that they're around role models that made them great citizens and good to the community and, and good to their families and could provide for their families. And, uh, uh, and yes, I do agree when my kids were younger in their 20s up to 30s that they had the chance to be uh, enjoy freedom, enjoy uh, some of a uh, oh, nomadic kind of life a little bit to see the world a little bit before they settled down. And both of my kids actually did that too. So I do agree, but uh, my kids did it through either school, uh, college, or uh, my son was in the Air Force for six years all of them building their careers in their 20s. That's all that they were worried about was building their careers and becoming somebody better. And both of my kids, um, with not very much help from their parents at all, uh, got their degrees and very, very proud of them. And uh, uh, I just kind of know what, if one of them said, I'm just going to go in a van and drive around the world and, and, and sell stickers and get people to uh, finance me through it. I'd hesitate. There's no doubt. I'd want them to be happy, of course, but at the same time, it's like really. I thought I brought you up better than that, but at the same time, I would support them. So anyway, so you can see where you're torn. So uh, times are different. <coughs> I agree. Are they for the better? Oh, I don't know. When they're trying to tear down our statues of good, bad, or indifferent, um, or everybody's calling each other racist and and I'm I'm someone that um, don't I don't see color until they bring it up and so it's hard I feel like we're kind of degressing I guess in, in some of the things that we've accomplished over the years um, equality was one of them I thought we were getting better in the last two years or so it's just been like going the opposite direction and it's like if I got a feeling, it, it, like a lot of us people from the 60s and all that stuff, I wasn't, uh, 50s would be more like the protesters in the 60s. And, and all that. Anyway, I was born in 1960. And uh, uh, I would be kind of uh, irked for all those people that protested and did all those uh, uh, civil rights campaigns back in the 60s and 70s to uh uh, get us more equality. I feel like we're kind of just going the opposite direction, and and so uh, anyway. Some it, once again, this is the stuff you talk about, and you should be able to talk about it with each other. And different opposing is fine, and and being civil to each other and, and still disagreeing that's cool. Uh, so uh, I will ask another question, and I, I'm sure this will stir up some feathers uh, because that uh, other. Uh, person that did some feedback is also a truck driver. So here's my next question and here's my next module. So maybe it's just me or maybe some of your listeners, and this is RV related, uh, have this question. But does it feel like when we're pulling our rigs down the road and stuff that semi-truck drivers, not all of them, are, I don't know, uh, kind of pushy <laughs> is it I mean uh, do they respect a person that's pulling an RV or driving a class A or class C or, or uh, you know uh, large trailers and stuff like that because it seems like especially you're doing long hauls between say uh, 
uh, Reno and Las Vegas, it's like some of those guys are just right on your ass. Sorry. <laughs> on your uh, tail. And some of them are feel very aggressive. And I even feel like sometimes they design the front of their trucks to look uh, aggressive. <laughs> and so they're intimidating. And so uh, some of them I love because uh, I'll pace myself uh, when I'm pulling my fifth wheel around 60 miles per hour. And I just don't feel like the equipment is designed to do much more than that. And so when I see a truck coming, I understand that he wants to do 65 or 70. So I'll hold my pace, look for an opening where I think he can pass, and then I'll kind of edge over to the silo and give him a hint that I realize you want to pass, and I will cooperate in all the <laughs> possibilities I can by moving over a little bit. Once they start getting into the other lane to start passing me, I know how long it takes for them to accelerate, and it's called consideration. I, that's why I'm wondering if they do that for us. Um, and I literally slow down so that truck can get by quicker so he doesn't have to stay in that opposite lane too long, or he or she, it doesn't matter. And, and um, others will pace themselves with me, and that's cool. And sometimes I'll pace myself with them, and I feel like I have a relationship. And But it seems like there's a large percentage of them that say, hey, I own this road. I'm doing something for society or something. You need to get the hell out of my way. And it feels that way. I'm just saying that. Maybe it's imagination. Maybe it's not. Um, but I feel like sometimes uh, truck drivers feel like they are a, a step above uh uh, all drivers and saying the roads are designed for me and, and you should work around my thing. So I'm going to, I don't care if you're going 55 the speed limit, I'm going to intimidate you by getting on your tail with a, you know, 18 wheel truck. And I'll do that to you if you're an RV or two. And do they understand that we may not have the capabilities of going faster? And the recommendations out there are saying in a lot of cases not to do much more than 60. And if you're pulling like a U-Haul trailer, they tell you you should be at 55, yet I'm always pushing 50, uh, 60 to 65 in those things. So, I mean, is it me or is it... Um, I love to hear the feedback from truck drivers of saying, yeah, it's, it is like that sometimes or it's all our fault, the RVers, you guys are crap. Or is it just misunderstanding or is it just human one person is a little different than all the others do rv rvers i feel like we definitely respect the truckers especially since we're pulling something bigger but do the truckers respect us back that would be a really interesting conversation and i'm saying conversation not opposing yelling and, and insulting each other and yeah i pulled some strings there uh, to just get the debate going but really, what do truck drivers, I love to hear from more than just one, what do truck drivers think about RVers and what's their attitudes? And even recommendations, if they come across a lot of bad RVers that aren't helping them out at all, I guess it'd be good to hear from that too. So in the comments below, if you can do a professional feedback, good, bad, or indifferent, below to help all of us understand each other, that would be a very cool thing. Um, in the meantime, uh, <laughs> I can tell you that I have respect for truck drivers, period. So whoever starts badmouthing me, let's put that up front first. But uh, at the same time, I, I just feel like they have sometimes an attitude that the world resolve, resolves around them and they are not part of the entire circuit of things. And so uh, I'd love to hear what kind of uh, things that all of us could do better to make sure we don't get ourselves killed on the highways. So anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that and move on to my next module. So going back to the nomadic uh, lifestyle, or should I just say RV full-time living and traveling, and those unique couples that are single people that can do it full time and somehow do it without jobs. I'll just leave it at that. And so a couple observations came along, along with the comment I got from the Sears guy. Um, 
is, well, recently some of you may have heard of, of uh, Road Warrior, and they just got an accident where he lost his life and his girlfriend is seriously hurt on a scooter accident during the eclipse. And then there was another one I was watching, yeah, I'm sorry, Nomadic Fanatic, sitting there doing a video of all his troubles, and which is nothing compared to Road Warrior, and, and certainly all of our troubles, even my troubles that I'll talk about later on my boat thing, uh, is nothing compared to these people in Texas and Florida and, and the Caribbean islands. Oh my God, um, we have nothing to really get worked up about when you compare it to that. When you lose your complete home, your boat, your your RV and stuff down there in those uh, hurricanes, Oh my gosh, so I do, I want to make sure that all of us appreciate what we have and also support those people that went through what they did. And some of you guys will say, well, why didn't they leave and all that stuff? Well, try to put yourself in their shoes and say, well, they don't want to leave their homes. It's all they got and they try to protect them and it's, just, and it's you know, it's human. And so, anyway, so I kind of question... And I had this, I talked this debate with my wife and it can, kind of came out different. Right? But I was like, is this RV nomad stuff really meant to be? I mean, when you start hearing like, oh my God, my transmission went out or I can't get my license because I'm in another state or or uh, uh, I'm having trouble with my rig, it's going to break, it's going to cost me thousands and stuff like that, which is not that different than having a house and things like that. So and it's like, and they act so surprised and devastated when it happens. And it's like, well, RVs, they're just not really designed for this full time going across the United States thing and on Canada and on Alaska and all that stuff. It, they, they, they're gonna break and they're very expensive to fix and it takes forever to get them fixed. That's the real, it's just like boats, man. Trying to get your boat fixed. There should, I tell you, if you want a good career, become a boat mechanic. My gosh, you'll always have a job. <laughs> so, RVs too. Anyway, um, but you have to ask yourself, it's like you listen to these shows and you, uh, and yes, I don't have to watch them, but I am, a, this is RV Talk Radio and we do RV stuff and RV Travel Buddy and RV Travel Quest and out the Travel Channel. We monitor these shows. So somebody in their comments said, well, you don't have to watch them. Well, <laughs> in some cases I do. And I have to watch the good with the bad. <laughs> in the way. Anyway, so um, my point is, is, like, is um, other than those that have a realistic view of what's going to happen and they have the finances to do it, um, you just roll the punches and things break and you fix them and... and uh, you look at people like Gone with the Winds and the uh, Tetramania and all these other people that are um, apparently invested or done well with their, their funds. And so when crisis comes, they put out some big bucks to fix their stuff, especially if you're a big catamaran or have a large boat in an RV. They're not freaking out. They're just like, here's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and they'll tell what happened and deal with it. And then it's like, move on. And they might tell you some numbers, just give you a realistic view of what that kind of lifestyle costs. And, and, but uh, at the same time, it's like, uh, they seem to be able to handle it. So that kind of RVing and a nomadic style and, and full RVing stuff is, is quite comfortable and realistic to me. But when I see these others where they're just like, oh my gosh, I just got a $2,000 bill for to fix my rig. Oh my God, what am I going to do? And then they start hinting about, you know, uh, hey, I need more Patreon and could maybe you donate more, buy more of my stickers or something. Then I kind of like, ah, come on. Is this really a practical lifestyle to be doing? Um, uh is really the message is really if you want to do it so bad um be realistic and two do you have the income or the skills or the skill set to be able to go around the united states and do things like work camping and and odd jobs and stuff you've got to earn an income because i can tell you that sometime things are going to change with youtube it's just a good thing and i have experience in in 
internet marketing back in AdSense days and uh, before YouTube, we used to do some stuff to make some really big bucks. And then overnight, they changed the way they wanted to do business and that devastated a lot of us. So I can tell you that, uh, well, life changes. Things are always changing. Um, life is guaranteed to change and, and, and systems and payment systems and affiliate marketing and all that stuff will change along with it. And it will check, take little different forms or go away completely or there's going to be competition and the income will drop from YouTube because another company is finally challenging them. Um, things will change. It's guaranteed. It's going to happen. So are you prepared? Do you have all your eggs in one basket? Been there, done that. So anyway, um, but yeah, so Sherry and I go, well, you know, uh, people are going to live how they're going to live. This is Sherry's answer. And Sherry goes, if they're going to want to live in a box all their lives, a uh, cardboard box, and they're happy, then it's all good. I guess it's the same thing with RV, nomadic van dwellers and all that stuff too. Um, but uh, I guess this day and age, because of uh, social media and all that stuff, we all have our opinions, right? So here I am, <laughs> talk radio. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's what we're just talking about. So it isn't hate. And so don't mistake any of this as hate. It's just observations. And of course, you tend to talk about the shows that are kind of the top shows and stuff. That's what we're all about. And, uh, and that's called social networking. And so the ones that are top, you see their videos the most. Those are the ones we talk about. Just like, did you see on Channel 5 News or something? Uh, they're more popular. Most people have seen that show or whatever. And uh, anyway, uh, that's kind of the point. Of, it's good to talk about. I think we're all a social influence on younger people and older people. And we all have the responsibility to report all sides of the story. And so I know there's shows like other talk shows and, and podcasts that you get on there and it feels like an RV sales show to me. They're selling something. They're talking about a product. They're talking about a certain uh, RV, a certain trailer, a certain RV park or RV memberships. And I just feel like it's a, the whole show is just selling RV stuff for either their uh, channel to make a living or uh, it's just too much RV. And so once again, I want to just let you know, we talk about the lifestyle. This is a lifestyle of and ours. This happens to be part time now. It used to be full time. So we understand all of it. And we've had all kinds of different RVs. We've had a class A. We've had a trailer. We have a fifth wheel. We've um, we've done all the different kinds of RVing, and we own a boat, which is kind of like an RV in water. So uh, we can at least have a uh, educated comment, or or at least feelings of the lifestyle on all those. And we've done full timing twice, so not opposed to it. It's just what's realistic, and and people that listen to our show or watch some of our channels are also people considering coming out here and doing this, and so. It's not all peaches and cream. And so I hope that people see our show as a show as uh, someone down to earth and realist. And yeah, we may be belly aching a little bit more or, or we're not. We don't sound like I'm selling um, uh, KOA memberships and campground uh, uh, affiliates and stuff like that. Uh, that's just not what this show is all about. But anyway, I, I hope that. What we try to do is create a, a relationship with the people we listen to. This is, happens to be my lifestyle, and, and I know how your lifestyles are. And hey, I'm Rob, and glad to meet you, and I hope we're together for a long time, and I'm glad to hear your stories. So let's move on. I don't know what it is, but I seem to be into funky music this week. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> it's just jazzed it up a little bit. Um, I think I'm in too good of a mood or something. But anyway, I do want to, once again, thanks for the feedback in the last show. Um, for a couple of people that said, well, Rob, you're just a little funny daddy and all that stuff. Please go back about two episodes ago. And I hope you uh, liked the uh, 
a different approach that we took to nomadic lifestyle and van dwellers and stuff like that. It was positive and also kind of analytical, trying to understand why. So anyway, but uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is our stupid boat. So you, you heard in the story in the last week, I told you we took our boat up. The batteries were bad. Anyway, we got it over to our slip. We haven't been up there since for three. We're finally going up this weekend. It's been like three weeks. Anyway, so my boat's sinking. <laughs> it's got a leak. And so it's like getting like six inches of water. And so the guy is working on it. It hasn't been the most dependable. He seems like a nice guy. Finally, um, anyway, so it's turning out that engine as is it's the fuel pump that's causing that engine not to stay started. So, but I'm having troubles. Like uh, the guy turned off the batteries, and so he came back like three days later, and I had like uh, a lot of water in the boat, almost scary. Anyway, uh, so we're kind of having him rewire it. It's like. It has an automatic float bilge thing. I think he damaged it when he was working on there. But it's really a small compartment to work in. So I, anyway, he's replacing the bilge, putting a little bit more high-tech float switch in there, and bypassing the battery system, going straight to the battery, so it's always on if there's water in the boat, even if the batteries were shut off. Uh, that's a good thing. So yeah, anyway, so we got that going. Sherry and I are gonna go up there. We're going to pull the boat out of the water at the end of the weekend. I think it's going to be operational to actually go out. And so we're going up for three days. And this is up at Lake Powell. And we're going to pull it and, and take it over to his shop. And we got another trip up to Central Oregon at the end of the month. And so we'll be you know, filming that. Anyway, so I'm just going to put the boat over to his boat yard. And I'm going to have him pull the out drives. Yeah, ching ching. And... Probably what's leaking is what they call the boots, and uh, it, it's where the out drive comes into and matches up with the engine. There's a rubber boot in there. So I'm just going to have them go through all the seals in there and all the boots, replace them all, and it's going to kind of kill my boating season. And I do also want to put a new canvas on it, so I'm going to kind of focus on just really sprucing up that boat between now and say spring and maybe i'll put the boat in lake sarara which is nearby before the summer then go up to lake pal again in the summer i could change my mind i don't and yeah and times it's like well maybe rob you should just sell a dang thing well it's a nice boat it's just just because we've had it a year we've only actually been out in it like five times so it's we're still learning the quirks about it and when you buy a used boat just like a used rv you're in, um, inheriting problems. And so you get, the only way you find out about those problems is with use. And so uh, we're finding this out. And then when you're storing something here in Arizona, like those boots could have dried out and cracked because we have so much heat here, things dry out. Uh, that's not really likely because it was leaking last year too. So I think I might have just inherited somebody didn't tell me I had a cracked boot back there or something. But and it's going to cost me a thousand bucks or so on top of the other thousand bucks. So that's just how it is. And, hey, it's just like RVs. Um, maybe I should sell stickers. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> see, if I did it, people go, Rob, you're being such an e-beggar. It's like, no, uh, <laughs> it, just, it doesn't fit us, does it? Anyway, um, uh, that's what's going on with the boat. We're going to go up there this weekend. Hopefully we'll have a nice weekend. Even if we can't use the boat, it's like an RV. We'll do some road trips up there because, you know, it's right at the border of Utah and Arizona is right there. So, uh, yeah, there's lots to do and lots of places to go see. And um, we'll have Cinder with us and she can swim off the back. You probably saw our video about the Lake Powell disaster. You'll see that Cinder loves to swim off the back of the boat. And we have fun doing that. So it's it's all good. But uh, yeah, um, and when it comes to looking at problems, remember at the beginning of the show I said it could be worse. I could be living in Texas, Houston. I could be in Florida. I could be in the Caribbean. Uh, I could have lost our boat. Uh, pff, my problems are nothing compared to that. So I am uh, grateful for all I have, grateful for you <laughs> for listening to our show. I am grateful for a lot of things. And uh um things happen and uh 
it seems like if you really look for it, um, just like oh, here's another comparison I saw on Fox News. Yeah, I watch Fox News. Sorry. Anyway, but uh, uh, like 9-11, those people that got killed and the people jumped out the sides and stuff, that the message out of that whole thing is those people uh, and some people made sacrifices to go help other people and not forget that happened and don't forget those people and, and what they did and let them be role models, which were all in a sense role models of what compassion can do for for each other and in time of need just like that aircraft that was uh supposed to go i think was supposed to go crash into the white house and the and the crew well the uh people on the flight uh, it fought back and they crashed it in the field in pennsylvania um that's those are people that inspire us these are people that that uh made a decision to do the right thing even at the largest cost which is your life so anyway, uh, <laughs> enough of that. Uh, let's move on. So you'll probably find this kind of interesting, but when you live in Arizona, all of us are going, oh, thank God the summer's over. <laughs> and I know that's totally backwards because uh, a lot of you folks are probably starting to think about fall. And, and I like fall. Fall's good everywhere. It's, it's even pretty nice here in Arizona. But for us, the temperatures are dropping. That means our eight, eight months of, of summer starts. And uh, going outside uh, to go for walks. And, and, and every restaurant down here you go to, uh, you can sit outside and be comfortable. Just not in the summer. And, uh, and it kind of starts in May, but it, you can start feeling the temperatures are stopping to, uh, starting to drop a little. The bad part is the pool's starting to get colder. <laughs> and, uh, uh, the pool, when it gets below 86 degrees, is starting to go, ooh, 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 you know, but uh, it's still tolerable. But uh, the pool, I think the highest I've seen it get is 92. And uh, that's just all natural heating from the sun. But when the fall comes, then it starts dropping. And when it gets down to like 75 uh 76 then you kind of still going Ooh, it's tolerable but you got to be a little more macho <laughs> not very macho i guess anyway so uh we're getting excited because now we can start going outside for walks a little more uh you know sherry and i have taken up uh, uh becoming vegans and so we were losing weight but we know that to complement that's going to require getting some exercise too so we got a long ways to go but uh I'm, i've I think Sherry just did a, uh, a form she just gave to me. I have lost 5.38% of my body weight, or body, yeah, body weight, since we started this. And we're actually getting ready to do a video where her and I are sitting down for uh, 8020 Vegan, talking about all the changes that we've noticed, good, bad, or indifferent. And uh, so for us, I just want to pass on it. We're excited because fall and winter is coming because that's our great, great time of year uh, to go for walks, to go outside and, and uh, be comfortable and, and the whole works. And I can't wait uh, where all you guys are going, oh, summer is almost over. We won't have this when the rain's going to start or snow. Some places have got snow. Ugh, yuck. Anyway, that's when I start appreciating where we're at. The last three months have been going, oh, God, when will this end? Anyway, so I thought I'd just pass that on and find it kind of humorous that uh, how things are so different in the different regions. And, and Arizona, definitely, we're excited because fall and winter is coming. Yay! Well, with all kidding aside and, and um, <laughs> jokes we make about things like, like van life and, and nomads and stuff, you know, in the last few years, I've uh, had friends or acquaintances that have aren't with us anymore. Um, and when I, since I've known them, they've told me stories about their lives in the World War II and things that they've done. And in my neighbor here, um, he's kind of interesting. Uh, they're a new couple that I met that. Uh, live next door to us are in their 80s and I got to know them um, 
since February. And I come over and he goes, oh, I see you got an RV. Yeah, me and my wife, we had an RV. We did all kinds of traveling and turns out they're from Washington State too and and told us all the great stories of the things they did in their RV. And then they noticed that I had a boat. And he goes, oh, I have a boat. And he like, in his garage, he's got tons of stuff. He goes, well, we don't have that stuff anymore because, you know, it's just too hard to do anymore. And uh, like I said, very nice couple. And uh, he'd take me out in his garage and he's like got this box full of things for uh, boats and checking to see if there's anything I need. It's like, hey, if there's something here you need for your boat, uh, let's see, you know, some old bumpers and some old uh, plugs and converters and adapters. And, and he was really sweet and, uh, uh, and told us all about the things he did with, uh, that they did in their boat and stuff. So he, they did boating and they did RVing and, and all kinds of things. That, and uh, so um, the point is, three weeks ago, he died. And uh, he found out he had cancer, and he also fell and broke his hip, and and it was kind of quick. And I was just getting to know the guy, and I guess the thing I learned from him the most was be a good person. Two is live your life, and they did. And and I haven't really got to see her much, but um, um, I'm sure that she's just torn up. I, and uh, anyway, but I think the point to this whole thing is if you have the opportunity to go boating or do your RVing, no matter what age, and yeah, we tease you guys and give you a hard time if you're young about this stuff, but it really does come down to is do it while you can because you just don't know how long you got. I have friends I've lost in their 50s uh, due to illnesses. Um, some I've... Uh, I haven't really met too many below that age that have passed, but at my age, I've had a lot of older acquaintances and they're not around anymore. And yet the the thing I got from all of them is they, your memories are the most important thing when you get older. And the more that you make while you're younger, the more content you will be when you're older, looking back at all the f fun things you did and you don't go through life saying, I wish I had or what if so anyway I something to think about so anyway we're gonna uh, wrap this show up I want to thank everybody for uh, listening to RV talk radio uh, we've enjoyed your comments enjoyed your uh, discussions and uh, feel free to give us subjects that you like us to talk about uh, I want everybody to be safe out there if you get the opportunity to do some boating or do some hiking or do some RVing or traveling or sailing around the world, you probably should do it. I'm Rob Scribner. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next week. Bye now.